Hello, friends, and welcome to Charlie's Creative Corner. Uh, glad you came by today to check out my videos. Uh, today we're going to continue on with our tobacco bag. I finished my beadwork on mine here. Got it all finished. Looks really pretty. And this isn't going to be too difficult. You're going to need a few supplies, though. You're going to need... Uh, some extra leather because I think I'm going to do some fringe on mine. I wasn't going to, but then I thought, you know, it's going to look a lot cooler with some fringe. And so we're going to need uh, some extra leather for that. We're going to need a little strip of leather for our tie or, you know, to tie it shut and some uh, imitation sinew, which it's pretty easy to find. You can get these at most craft stores. Uh, you're going to need, I'm going to use a size eight, Glover's needle to sew everything together, uh, possibly an awl in case you need to poke some holes in case you can't get through in places, and some beads. And when I say beads, I don't mean like seed beads. I mean like you're going to need some kind of like crow beads or pony beads or something like that. I would recommend some crow beads because um, they got like they're a lot bigger and they have nice big holes in them to stick the leather through. Because I'm going to put a little bit of beads on the fringe and make it look really nice and pretty. Uh, not a lot going on. Uh, it's a nasty day out. It's windy. It's cold. It's rainy. It's wet. It's not looking like spring anymore. <laughs> I'm kind of sad about it because it was really nice here for a long time and now it's like not nice at all. So the weather has been just kind of cruddy all day and it was cruddy uh yesterday too and i think it's going to be cruddy again tomorrow so i'm going to hang out at home and do some stitching and beading and get some work done in my my craft room uh not else not really much else going on uh here in about a week shade gets to go get his pin out uh he's not he doesn't have any more of his anti-medication or anti-anxiety medications left so he's been a little antsy he's kind of been digging up it. I put a little rug down on his cage he kind of been digging in that and like rolling around and acting kind of goofy but that's okay it's he's probably incredibly stir crazy I don't blame the poor little fella uh not really a whole lot to talk about today but I wanted to try and get in on this uh get this done and then I think after this I will probably finish the carousel felt stuff so that I can continue on with other projects. I just wanted to kind of do something in between and give myself a little break from that. that that's a lot of work. And plus give you guys some time to get yours finished. Um, I don't know what else to say. I did get a, another book today that's really cool. I really like it. It's, uh, I think I have it nearby. Let me see if I got it over here in my stack of books. I got it today. It's the cute book and it, it is cute. It's got a whole bunch of different patterns for little felt critters. So we might have to kind of dig into some of these. These are really adorable, just super cute. And I'm going to have to make some. So we might dig into that a little later on. I want to do some more felt projects. I was going through my books last night that I've gotten and looking through some patterns and some things that we might be able to make. So not much else really going on just uh, trying to stay out of the wind and the cold. I would like to go out and walk and, you know, explore a little bit, but we can't do that when it's yucky out. I mean, we could, but who wants to? It's no fun when it's grossed out like that. But uh, I'm going to flip you guys around and we are going to get started on finishing the tobacco bag. All right, we might have to kind of maneuver the camera around a little bit here and there to make sure we can get everything on film. So, <clears throat> pardon me. As far as supplies go, of course, you're going to need your tobacco bag, both sides of those. Okay. And then you're also going to need, you're going to need some really sharp scissors, something that you can cut the uh, leather with that will get through the leather really well. And you're going to need some scrap pieces of leather also. So some kind of scrap leather that you might have sitting around or the excess from what you cut this out of. Um, you're going to need your imitation sinew, 
This stuff's really easy to get a hold of. It's it's sticky and it's really thick and it's really strong. I was going to use Nymo to sew this on here, but when I figured out that the sinew will go through the head of the needle for the size eight Glover's needles, got some beads here, uh, I decided to go with sinew. I like the sinew when I do leather work because it's so strong and it really holds on to everything really well. You're also going to need a size eight or 10. I recommend a Glover's needle. You're going to need some kind of a Glover's needle. If you don't have that, you're going to need a punch to punch through because you're going to be sewing through multiple layers of leather. Okay. So I would recommend a Glover's needle. I'd highly recommend a metal tipped uh, th uh, thimble. Jeez, if I can think of it, something where it's not going to poke through and get your finger. You want to make sure that you can have you have something real strong that's going to protect your finger. And I would also recommend an awl, uh, something that if you need to, you can poke through the leather easily if you need to. And then, of course, some kind of beads, thicker beads like crow beads and stuff to uh, decorate your fringe. Now, I got this all sewn up. And what we need to do is we need to stitch this thing together. First of all, I like to add my slits for my leather strap that's going to be the drawstring for the bag. Okay. Now, I'm bringing in just a little bit. <coughs> Pardon me. And bring it down this thing's kind of high kind of high up there there we go um now what i like to do i just i cut it with scissors i don't have any leather razor blades or anything like that so what i like to do i can still kind of see mine here i shouldn't have put it on the outside of the bag but it is what it is i can faintly see my lines on this side you can see the lines there that have been labeled already and I will start on that side since that's the case. And I basically, I just take my leather and where it's labeled, I'm going to fold that in half, kind of like that. And I'm just going to cut my slit just like that. And that might have been a little large, but that's okay. It's better to have excess space here than not enough space here. And that's it. And then those are going to be all cut and we'll be able to string our thing through. I kind of cut those a little too much, but that's okay. That is part of the game. So we'll just kind of go like that. And I believe that is there. And see, I'm having a hard time seeing them now. And this is basically where your drawstring is going to go, is all this is. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to put a drawstring there. And we'll be able to lace our drawstring through that. Okay, so that step is done. That's easy peasy enough. And we're going to thread up our... Uh, sinew here. We're going to get this started up. So I'm going to find my start somewhere in here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to take quite a bit off of this because I don't want to have to run out. I don't want to run out and then have to rethread. And I was thinking about doing a double running stitch to seal it up. So I want to make sure this is plenty long. It's better to have enough than to not have enough. Look at our needle here. Okay, and we will thread up our needle. And you want to make sure that your needle head is big enough to take that sinew. So we got threaded up here, and I'm going to have a lot of sinew because I don't want to run out and have to start a new tie on this. So we have our, we're all threaded up here. So I'm going to set that just aside a little bit. Now, before I start sewing, 
what I want to do is I want to figure out my fringe for the bottom. I'm going to put some fringe hanging down off the bottom. Now for that, I don't have anything that I can uh, uh, cut. I, I know they have fringe cutters where they're little blades and you can cut your fringe really easily. Now I wanted to kind of, I'm just going to kind of wing it on this. And this is how I did the fringe for my hubby's bag and it worked out really well. And what I'm going to do, I want to figure out the length that I want it. I don't want it too incredibly long. I'm going to go with about there is probably plenty. So I'm just going to cut across here like that. And I'm just going to start cutting strips and, uh, I don't like to go too thick, but I don't like them to be thin either. So it's kind of a happy medium with them. I just kind of eyeball it and cut my strips that way. And this will be our fringe for the bag. And they don't have to be perfect. They kind of look a little better when they're kind of different. And, you know, a really good way to cut fringe also is to have a circle and just cut in a circle and keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And you can do that also. And that way you'll get a really nice long strap of leather uh, for your straps. Now you can't buy pre-cut leather strips, but it's kind of expensive. And if I have excess leather, I am happy enough to cut it myself. And it takes a little time, but that's okay. It's, I prefer to cut it myself. I don't want to spend $16 on leather straps when I can just cut my own. And you can use like a razor blade to cut them if you want them really straight, if you want them perfect and all that other junk. But I'm not particular, so that's how mine are going to go. Now, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of gauging how many I want here. And I like to put mine really close together because it looks really cool when you put them close together. And uh, it all depends on how much you want. If you want to go with just a couple, like four or five, you can do that. If you want to do a lot, then you can do a lot of them. And I think I might be able to get one more out of this. We'll see. And I, you know, I might, I'll probably trim it too. I'm probably not going to keep it that long even. Even that's pretty long. There we go. A couple more. I think that should be plenty. So I have my fringes cut. I'm just going to set those there. Get to set these aside. I keep a lot of my scraps for my leather because you never know what you're going to need it for. <laughs> and now as far as our, uh, our drawstring, we're going to do that last. So I'm not going to worry about cutting that right now. Now I'm going to put on my thimble here. And then we're going to turn this bag inside out. So what we want to do is we want to make sure this is going to be the inside of the bag. And this is going to be the inside of the bag. So we want to make sure that we are sewing our bag on the opposite sides. Okay. So my beading is going to be on the inside. My bead work is going to be on the inside. And then the smooth side for the back is going to be on the inside. So you want to make sure that's going to be on the inside of your bag. Okay. Now, um, let me see here. Hang on a second. Now you can do a, uh, tacking stitch 
on the two ends up here and on the bottom to keep it tacked together while you're stitching. I myself am not going to do that. I'm just going to hold it and keep it secure in place while I stitch. So I'm going to do a running stitch for my bag here today. So I'm going to take my needle. Let's see, get my thread here. And I'm going to put a little knot at the base of my uh, sinew here, just to secure it. And don't worry, this will be on the inside. No one will see your little knot. And uh, it will be hidden when because we're stitching inside out. So it will be hidden. I'm going to do a couple. There. Kind of uh, jumped away from me. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do, running stitches are nice because they make it nice and secure and they hold on to everything really nicely. Now, I'm going to attach my fringe as I go. Um, some people like to put a strip of leather and then cut the fringe and just attach the strip of leather. I kind of like to do it one by one. That's just how I roll, I guess. I'm going to tack this in over here on the end. Actually, I think, hang on, I want to go a little closer to the edge there. I want to get a little more of that corner. There we go. And just pull through. Now running stitch, I'm going to trim that tail. The running stitch is nice and secure. And the reason I say that is because you're, I'm going to go over once and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a double run. Now, when I say running stitch, I'm going to show you how to do it here. So you bring your needle through both pieces of leather, make sure you're inside out. Okay. Make sure your outside is facing you or your inside is facing you. So your inside on the outside and your outside on the inside. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. That was kind of confusing. So the running stitch, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to make little runs. And so our, our thread, we brought our, our needle through, and here's our knot down here. Let me bring you in just a touch. It's a little cloudy today, so it might be a little dark as I'm filming. So I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize in advance for that. So our knot's on this side right here, and you see our thread is coming up over here. And I'm just going to take my needle. And it's, it's up to you how big of a space you want to do, but I'm going to bring it through. And, you know, you can hold your stuff and maneuver it and make sure it's lined up as you go. You want to always double check, triple check that everything's lined up. And I'm going to go down, back down. And try not to poke yourself. That's the key. So I'm going to go back down. I'm going to go probably about right there. And you want to go in a little ways on your leather, but you don't want to go too far in because then it's going to eat up a lot of your pattern. And so we come back through, kind of get wrapped up in our work here. And that's our first running stitch there. I think you can see it right there. Now we're going to leave a gap. And we're going to come back <coughs> through the bottom about the same distance. So we're going to go, oh, probably about right there. And we're going to leave a little gap on the top and pull through. And it's just kind of going in and out and in and out through our leather here. And like I said, keep making sure your stuff's in line and that it's secure. And try and keep the stitches as straight as you can because you don't want your 
bag to, it'll bubble out and kind of look weird if your stitches are in too deep and like one side's in deep and one side's out more. And so you want to kind of keep it as straight as possible. And you're going to want to take it on the other side and do the same. Have a little distance there and bring it through. And these Glover's needles really come in handy when we're sewing leather because other, otherwise it just literally will just fall apart on you. Do the same over here. And you know, you make sure you make use of your thimble. Don't ruin your hands. Because I, if a th if the top of a head of a needle goes through your fingers, it hurts. I've had it happen. It sucks. And you will have a sore finger for a few days if that happens. Um, the sinew is nice, though, because it's nice and sticky. And it waxed up nice, holds together really well. And it's a strong thread. Now, this is obviously is imitation sinew. You can get real sinew. But this is imitation. And... I find that it works really well for stitching leather. It is my favorite thing to stitch leather with because it holds so nicely. And it really is strong. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way down the side here. And like I said, the stitches don't have to look or be perfect because nobody's going to see these stitches. But you want them secure because you don't want getting, you want to you don't want to get a hole in your bag or something. So you want to make sure it is secure. And like I said, keep aligning as you go. Make sure that your bag is getting lined up right because you don't want it to be crooked. Caught up on my, there we go. It's caught up on my extra leather over here. See, we got our stitches going. You kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like there. Now I'm going to go all the way down, and then when I get to about here, I'm going to start figuring out where I'm going to be putting my fringe. Bring out just a touch. Sorry, it's so dark today. I got every single light on in my room and it's still dark in here. I'm moving this stuff over here to this side because I keep getting caught on it. There we go. And just work your way through. It took a little while to beat it, but the first, the green beads I started with in my other video, the holes were really tiny in those things and so I couldn't use my Glover's needles and then the other beads I started using they worked fine they were uh, the Glover's needles worked on them so that I don't know it was something with those green beads so the first part of my bag was kind of a struggle honestly because there were some pretty I bent a needle and everything so there were some real thick parts I couldn't get through but that's okay. We got through it. We made it through. And these are really pretty little bags. And like I said, you can put any design on the front. You can do fringe. You can do it without fringe. You can do it with beads on the fringe. You can do a neck necklace part. You can add like a piece of leather or even braided leather. And up at the top here to make it a necklace or a bag like that you could carry like a carry handle or something. You can add a little hoop on there. You could attach it to your belt buckle or your belt and add a little hoop on it. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities with these accessories here. It's a really fun thing to do and there's a lot of different ways of doing things. And I'm actually just happy to be getting back into the leather work. I absolutely love to do leather work. I was in a class in high school and we did a lot of leather work. It was, I was actually in shop class. 
As a chick, yeah, I was in shop class, but I loved it. And we did a lot of cool stuff in there. And we did leather for a whole semester and I loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, can we just do this all the time? I love working with leather. I love the smell of it, the feel of it, and the way it turns out when it's finished. It's a really fun medium. We didn't work with this soft of leather. We worked with real heavy leather and we uh, stamped it. I, I made my dad a belt, I remember. It was pretty cool. It took a long time. Do one or two more here and then we're gonna start putting fringe on. It goes kind of slow for a little while, but it's worth the stitch. You wanna make sure your stitches are nice and secure. You wanna make sure that this bag's gonna stay together. You put all this work into it, you want it to stay where it's at. I'll put some fringe on here. Actually decide where we're gonna put the fringe here. So let's see here, we got a bunch of strips here. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna start. I think that might be a little need to move over just a touch. I say probably probably about right there. I'll make just a little mark right here. And right here. Now I know where to start my leather, or my uh, fringe. So I'm gonna do a few more, a few more stitches. Keep making sure that we're aligned. That's the deal here. Ah, getting all wrapped up. Okay. So I got my, where I want to be with my fringe. So I'm going to move my, hang on, I got to move my needle down on the thread a little. It's always good to move it here and there so it doesn't get, you know, frayed or whatever as you're doing this. So, now when I do my fringe, the key to it, I'm going to open my bag just a little bit. You want this fringe, the smooth side, to be facing the proper direction. Now, if I want it to be facing this direction, like that, because see... I mean, I don't think it really matters. You could have the rough side facing if you really 
wanted the rough side facing. <coughs> but we're going to sew it on like this. And so when we turn the bag inside out, it's going to go like that. So when you do it, it's kind of like doing these. You're going to want that rough. If you're doing the rough side on the inside, then you're going to want the rough side facing you. Now, if you want the rough side outside, then you're going to want it facing the other direction. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Cause what we're going to do is we're going to sew this on here like this with the inside of the bag. And when we undo the bag and turn it inside out, okay, we're going to be turning the bag inside out. This is going to come down like this. So I want my rough side up because that is how I want it to look like that one. So we're going to, this bottom might be a little closer together of stitches because we're going to be stitching on our fringes. So I'm going to bring that down, kind of sandwich that in there. And you can have it out just a little if you want to kind of make sure it grabs onto the thread or to the fringe. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to bring my needle over. And I am going to tack that fringe into place with my needle. And then you might not, you want to double check everything because it is three layers and you might not get through your first few layers. So always make sure that you've gotten all the way through both parts of the bag and the fringe. So that's going to be tacked on there. See that tacks that fringe on there. And we're going to do that again. And we're going to keep doing this with all the fringe going all the way across. So I'm going to put this one next door to him. And I'm going to bring it down just a little like that. There we go. And you can kind of see the fringe coming out of that bottom there. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to tack through that and the bags, the bag pieces. And bring that back up and through. Just like that. And that's going to tack on that fringe. Now, if you really wanted to make sure that that was going to stay on, what you could do is before you put the bag together like this where you start sewing, you could tack these on all individually. One by one, you could line them all up and tack them all down and then put your bag together. But that's only if you think that it's going to get a lot of rough wear and tear and you want it to stay secure and you want them to stay in place. So that's entirely up to you how you want to do that. I don't mind it this way. I know I'm not going to go running around with it. It's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. Mind you, if you were running around with it outside or using it all the time, it might get a little more wear and tear and you might want to tack down that fringe before you sewed it on like this. But this is just a simple way to do it here. Oh, hello, pencil. And that is how you do your fringe. And don't worry because it looks weird, but when you flip it inside out, when we, we flip our bag inside out, and uh, it will come out and it will look really, really nice. So, and then we can put our beads and things on it. And we're going to put another one. I'm just going to go cross, put all my little fringes on here. Like I said, just make sure that when you're tacking it down with your needle that you're getting all the pieces, all three of those pieces, the, in and the front and back of your bag and your fringe when you go through it with your needle because you don't want your fringe to fall off. But, you know, you could, you could tack it in there. You could sew it on first and tack it in and then come back and over sew it and make sure that it's on there really well. That's entirely up to you. 
uh, if you want to be a little more reassured. If it's something that you're going to use all the time or say you are using this for regalia and you use it a lot in powwows and things, you might want to tack it in there first and then uh, and then sew it on. That way you know your fringe is going to stay on there. If you're giving it to a younger child or if you're going to be out and about using it, if it's something that you know you're going to use like daily or something, I would probably tack it in first and then sew it with the uh, over, I would over sew it after that. Got a few more left here. You want to go make sure you're getting through the center of that fringe too. It's not like off to the side when you stitch it or something. You want to make sure you're getting in the center of that piece of fringe. I kind of like to look at my fringe and see if one side's smaller or bigger. I stitched the bigger side. So there's a little more to hold on to there. Just be careful going through make sure you're not going to get yourself with the needle. These Glover needles, you have to think if they can go through leather, they can go through flesh really easily. So be cautious when you're using Glover's needles. Because they are sharp. Take this bracelet off. It's kind of noisy, a little noisy. Now, I'm going to kind of eyeball this, see if that looks centered, I think. That's kind of why I like to overlap my fringe on the outside a little bit, just to make sure it looks good. And I think I'm going to put one more piece of fringe on there. Now, uh, where my scissors go? can't remember the length. That's a little short. So I'll go this way with it. I'm just cutting another piece here. It should be about, I 
right length, maybe a little more. You know, I'm going to probably trim that down a little anyway, so. It doesn't quite matter if it's perfect. I'm going to put another, another piece on just to make sure it looks good. advice I can give is to go slowly through your leather so you don't get yourself this you don't want to rush it anyway you want it to look nice and we're looking nice and even I don't think we have to worry about that much anymore so we're gonna just keep run stitching uh, keep uh, putting running stitches down until we get to the top and that's the end of our fringe there And I keep going through here. That sinew is so nice and strong. I love using the sinew for them. Really nice, strong hold on those. Holds the leather together really nicely. Easy to work with. And you can separate your sinew. I used one full piece because I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. But if you're sewing something smaller, you can separate the sinew like you would a thread, uh, like an embroidery thread almost. There's multiple fibers in there, so you can always separate it if you need to separate it and get a smaller piece of sinew to work with. And if you don't have sinew, you can use another thread, a uh, cotton thread or something like that, something thick. Okay, I'm just going to keep working down to the top here. And when I get up to my, my point, up to my top, I'll come back and show you what to do after that. All right, so I'm on my last stitch here on the top. Now bring it on through your top. Don't uh, disconnect your thread or knot it, though. Just go on through your top. Now with the running stitch, when you do a bag or something like this, you're going to want to do a double because that'll make sure that it's really nice and sealed. So what you're going to want to do, let's see, we, we've done our running stitch all the way through. Now, <coughs> pardon me, sorry about that. What you want to do is we're going to want to go back around in the same stitch. But see, our thread's coming up out of here. I don't know how well you can see this. It's kind of a same color on color. Now, um, so you can see your threads coming up here and then you have a thread here and then it, there's a gap and then there's a thread here and then there's a gap. You're gonna wanna take your needle and you're gonna wanna go through the same hole next to that thread right here. You see this thread? I don't know if you can see it. There's a thread right here, okay? You want to take your needle through the same hole as that thread and you're going to be coming up in the back next to that thread in the back. Okay. And you're going to pull through and that thread will fill that gap 
on that side and you're going to have thread all the way. I don't know if you can see that's so a bad. See that all the way. And now on this side, you can see that you have a thread here. Okay. And you have a thread here and then you have a gap. Well, you're going to want to fill in that gap with the thread and you want to take your needle and go through the hole next to that thread and then make sure you're coming through the same way in the back. Oh, I think that's, nope, not quite. Sometimes it takes a minute to line it up proper. You want to line it up with that thread in the back. Okay, so you have your two threads here in the back. I don't know if that's going to focus. You have your two threads here. I hope you can see those. The sinew is kind of hard to see. And then in the back, you have your one thread. And then there's this gap. We're going to go through there to fill in that gap. So go through that. And see now all of those are filled in. So after you're done, there will be thread all the way through. Because see, you can see the gaps. There's a thread, a gap, thread, gap, thread, gap. And then when we sew it with the running stitch double, and see it's the same on the other side, thread, gap, thread, gap, thread. And then when you run it back through, because this is a double running stitch. So when you run it back through, you're going to have, I got some uh, wax coming off here. Um, you're going to have thread flush all the way through on both sides. So our thread's coming up out of here. Okay, and you can see there's two threads there, and then there's a thread here, and there's the gap. So we want to go and put our needle through the beginning of the or the end of that gap. So this is the gap here. So we want to put our thread through that hole where that other thread is. Make sure we're coming up on the proper side here, right next to that one on the other side, right at the end of that one. And we'll pull it through. And that will fill the gap. See, we have thread all the way down now. And we're going to do that again on this side. We're going to jump that gap and put our needle in. And then we're going to come up at the end of that thread on the other side. And pull through. So basically, we're doing the same thing that we did when we started, but opposite. So we're filling in all those little gaps and making sure that there are no thread gaps at all uh, on either sides. And it kind of, it works its way through. It does it on its own. You don't have to do anything. You just got to keep sewing and it'll keep doing that. Go up into that gap. Make sure we're going through the right hole in the back and come through. And that is going to put thread all the way down and seal that real nice on both ends. So we got the gap here. There's a thread there. We want to put our needle through that hole there. Make sure we're coming through the right hole back. And it'll go through nice and easy because you've already been through there. So there's already a hole there. It'll come through nice and easy. And this is the best I have found for the patches or pouches and uh, bags and things because it's a nice uh, stitch that, you know, seals up any openings or anything like that. You're not going to have any openings or anything in your bag because it's going to seal everything up real nice and tight. And it's going to make, if you put tiny objects in there and stuff, you're not going to lose anything. There's not going to be any gaps there for anything to fall through. You want to make sure you're lining up, too. You want those threads touching. And that is how you do the double uh, running stitch there. And it's a nice, easy stitch, but it's also a nice, secure stitch, too. And you can't just do it singly, but like I said, I would highly recommend a double. 
because it just it's going to guarantee that everything's going to be sealed up nice i hope you can see that i think you can see all the run see there's all your you can tell over here are the gaps and over here there aren't any and vice versa on both sides so that's a really good way of getting things sealed up so if you want to continue going through on your bag with your running stitch the opposite direction to the end i'm going to continue mine here and keep working it through and then just do the same thing you did with your fringes just do the same thing where you, where your fringe uh, stitches are okay you don't have to worry about those fringes coming off those aren't going to come off of there they're, they're sealed in. They're pretty good. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get to my end and I will. Okay, so I got, I got to the top here. I'm all finished. Now when you stitch, always make sure you're not stitching in these uh, fringes in here. So they're not getting sewed in with the edges. Now I'm just going to tie a knot on this side here. And like I said, nobody sees this. So you don't have to worry about it showing and it's not a big deal to put a knot on the inside of it i'm going to do probably a triple knot here to me this is the fun part i do like beating it but putting it all together and making it yours and adding the fringe and the beads and whatever else you want to add to it really is the fun part of making these pouches. Okay. So I got a good knot on that. I'm going to take that off of there. Snip that off. And we are now going to turn it inside out just kind of don't go too crazy with it do it gently this is way easier to do on larger bags i've done this on small bags and it is not fun do not pull on your fringe to do this because you could pull your fringes off so just take your time and be careful as you go down to do it and you can and stick your thumb down there and kind of punch it down and make it look nice and even okay and uh, sometimes it helps to go all the way around like this with your thumb and kind of punch all that out of there make sure it comes out looking good and even so that is sewn up there looks wonderful i love it now i'm going to get my thread out of the way here i've already trimmed my uh pieces for the drawstring and i just took a couple or uh what do you call it a piece of the uh excess i had and trimmed it now a good way to figure out what you need is to take the leather that you have and just wrap it here, I'll show you with the piece that I have here. You can take your, a, a scrap piece of leather and set your bag on it and just kind of fold it into that. And that'll kind of show you how long of a piece that you need and how long of a drawstring that you're going to need. So that kind of gives you an idea on that aspect. But I just, I trimmed one here. And so I'm going to start putting that in. And basically all you got to do, I start, I leave this part open because this is where I'm going to tie it here in the middle in, the, in between the two because there's four on here. And so I'm going to leave these two open. So I'm going to start on uh, this side here with weaving that in there. And basically all you do is you just bring it through. And if it bothers you to have it twisted, don't make sure to, that it's straight as you do it. And then... Go in from the back, like 
like that. And I'll flip it over. And you can kind of pull on it a little and go in from the front and then in from the back. Just keep weaving it in and out of our, our slits here like that. And then we'll come back over to this side like this. And that is your tie for the front. And you, you know, you can uh, even it out. And that make, makes it a little bit even on there. Now I'm gonna add my beads to the bottom of my fringe. And I think I'm gonna keep my fringe that length. I like it that length. So I'm gonna keep it that length. Now, um, I got some beads here. Get this over here. Um, I can get it open. This is kind of a neat little box I got this at the hardware store, it's actually for tools, but it was like three bucks. So I was like, hey, that's perfect. And you can kind of pick and choose, I mean, and go with what you have, kind of go with uh, what's available to you, or you can pick something else. Uh, you want something like these, these are my crow beads here, or uh, these are my glass India beads, I'm sorry. And they have nice big holes in them and go into the leather really well. So I think I'm going to use those for this. I'm going to pick out my colors here. I think, <coughs> I think I'm going to see how many of my greens, that green matches really pretty. So I'm going to see how many of those I got. How many fringes do I have here? Two, four, six, eight, nine. I don't think I'm going to have enough of those. Maybe I do. And you can put, you know, one or two on there. You can put three, you can put it however many you want on there. That's entirely up to you. Uh, I, I think I will do some red though. I think that this red is really nice. This real deep red. That other one looks kind of like an orange. I'll buy more of those green. Oh, there's one down there. I actually, I think I might dig some of these out, actually. That might be easier for me. It's all about kind of figuring out what you want for color. I think the beads really add a lot to the fringe. I'll do this off white, that's pretty. Get one more of those. There's one. have one. Awesome. All right. And the red, maybe I should do blue. I just that blue. That kind of goes with it. The blue would be pretty. I don't have a lot of the blues though either. I don't have a pink. There's a purple.
one more of those red ones. There we go. I mean, you could try to do hair pipe beads, but those are kind of a small opening on those. The longer hair pipes are really tiny openings. So I don't know if we could do hair pipes on those. I'd love to, but I don't think they're gonna work. I wanted to use these bone disc beads, but I don't think there's no way those are gonna go on there. So I have to use those for something else. Okay, so we got our beads. Close that up there. I'm just gonna start tying beads on. Um, it doesn't really matter what I like to take my I like to kind of trim like that on there kind of make it a little pointed makes it a little easier to get the uh, beads on I just put them all on like that and we'll tie them at the bottom. And when you tie them, you'll tie your first one. Bring in a little, tie your first one here so you'll wrap it around like that and then bring it through and then just bring it down, kind of like that. And it doesn't have to be too t perfect. See, looks real cool like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna trim again. Like that, just kind of take a little triangle off of the bottom. Kind of makes it a little easier to put those beads on. And then put these on like that. And then when you get to your other one, you want them, if you want them all lined up the same length, which that's how I want mine, I like to, I lay it on its side, kind of like that. And I do have, let me find it. Uh, where did I put it? Was, I have a tiny little uh, crafting awl. And... Basically, this is sharp too, but it comes in kind of handy. So what, what you do with them is you'll tie your knot, okay, onto your leather. You kind of figure out where does my knot need to be. So we need to be a little lower, about right there. And you can put your all into the knot when you tie the knot and kind of hold it down to keep that where it's going to stay. Now it works a little better with thread, but that's something you can do if you need, if you're really picky about it and you want it absolutely perfect. That's something that you can do to keep them even. And so I'm going to put the rest of the beads on here real quick. You can pick out whatever beads you like. You can do clear ones and sparkly ones and shiny ones or opaque ones, pony beads, round beads, anything with a nice large hole on it will look nice. Anything to kind of add that extra little decoration and your own personal touch to them. I'm going to continue adding beads to mine. Like I said, all you got to do is I just kind of trim it to make the ends nice and easy to load the bead on. Um, and then just put your beads on. Always be cautious. Don't pull really, really tight on this because you can tear and break your fringe. So don't pull too terribly tight. You don't need a terribly tight knot. So I'm going to keep working on this and then I will meet back up with you and we'll do the final little finishing touches. All right. So I got my beads put on the bottom there. How pretty is that? I love those uh, India crow beads on there. Really pretty. And you know, they kind of make them heavy because it's a glass bead, but it really adds a little special touch to it. Now I'm gonna add some of those. Oh, geez, ouch, I just bumped my leg on my desk really bad. 
I'm gonna add some of those to my drawstring also. And see, my drawstring's a little bit thick. So I'm gonna have to trim that down in order to put those on there. So I'm going to bring you over a little now that I bumped into you. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did down here, but I'm gonna go up just a little bit higher with that and just kind of trim it into a point so I can get my beads on there. I'm gonna do that over on this side here. Kind of make a little bigger of a one there. And then I'm gonna put some of these on this one. And it's a little thicker of a leather, but that's all right. It'll still look really pretty. I'm gonna push those way up so I can tie a knot. Once I tie my knots, I'm going to, I'll pull them back down. Got on there. The uh, curl beads really add that extra little touch. And that's what you wanna do with these. You wanna make them yours. You wanna add little touches. You can even do like a, a beaded edge if you wanted. You can do other beads on there. You can do uh, like a braided leather uh, necklace part and you could hang it around your neck. Uh, so you want to make it yours. You want to add all those little special little touches that make it yours. And that's what makes this fun is to make it something unique to you. It's uniquely yours. And uh, the pattern on mine isn't a pattern I did. This was a, uh, I want to say it was a woodland Indian pattern, if I remember right. And I really liked the pattern on there. I liked those flowers. It was really pretty. Now this one's a little thicker over on this side, so I'll try and move these up a little. Might be a little harder to tie a knot like that. And just get creative. Let those creative juices flow and, and enjoy it and make it yours. Respect the craft and do it respectively. So now we have some up at the top too. And see, we can you can tie this in a knot. You can just do a little overhand tie, which is what I think I might do with mine. You just kind of overhand tie it. Before I tie that tight though, I want to have this loose because I... I'm going to add one more special little touch to this. And I have uh, pinking shears. And pinking shears are the ones that have, see the zigzag in there and they make a cool zigzag pattern when you cut things. So I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna cut this top angle here with my pinking shears. And I'm gonna kind of add a little bit of a, a little design little kind of fun to the top here. This might be a little tricky. I probably should have done this before I put my beads on, but that's okay. You want to make sure not to cut your... Uh... See, I'm just going to go along this edge. I don't want to make it too much shorter. I just want to kind of add a little fringe to that, make it kind of fun. See, and that'll make a nice little design there at the top. I'm going to do it on the back here. It's kind of a trick to get over here to this edge, but try not to cut where you've sewn. The trick with picking shears is you got to line them back up every time you got to move forward a little. I'm trying to keep that curve at the top there, that angle, while I do this. There we go. And that kind of made it really fun up there at the top. So there's that. And one more thing, just one more thing I'm going to add. I need to move myself for a little. There we go. Is 
This is kind of an idea. Uh, you don't have to do it. Uh, this is something that you can do though. If you don't want to add a necklace piece, what you can do is you can take another piece, another strap of leather, okay? And you can take that piece and you can bring it, it's a little tricky after you get your drawstring in, but you can take that piece and bring it through your gap holes here, whatever you call these, I don't know what you would call them, like that, okay? So you can take them through there like that, put it on the other side here too, and if I can get it, hang on, I'm trying. So you can take that in through there, through the two on the back like that, and just leave it like that. And what you can do is you can tie up your drawstring like this, or you can just tie a one-handed knot. And then you can take this piece here, let me zoom out, and you can tie this to your belt buckle, and you can have it hanging on your hip as you walk along. So say, pretend my wrist is my belt. You can do it on your belt loop on your jeans, or if you were wearing a belt, you can hang it from your belt, and you tie that on there, and you can take the bag with you. So that's an option too. So if you want a place to hang it from, or if you just wanna hang it, you could hang it off of your purse, you could hang it, you know, if you're traveling your backpack or whatever, and you can still take that with you. So that's a way that you can use it to wear it if you want to wear it instead of just carrying it. And I mean, you could even tie a little bow at the top or tie a little knot up here and even just carry it like you would a bag, like a purse. And so that, my friends, is our uh, tobacco pouch. Now, like with the top here, you can tie it real tight like that, and then you can do a looped knot also. And, you know, don't tie that too tight because that is going to be rough to get uh, apart. And that is how we make our tobacco bag. And it was a lot of fun to make. It turned out very beautiful, way more beautiful than I thought it would. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that you guys were able to make your own tobacco pouch. And like I said, you don't have to put tobacco in it. You can put anything you want. If you do want to put tobacco in it, put your tobacco in there. Um, but that's how you make our tobacco pouch. Pretty simple, not too bad, and it has a beautiful outcome. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to leave a little message or ask for an, a recommendation on another tutorial, let's go ahead and leave it down there in the comments. Um, please like and subscribe. I, I'm glad you stopped by. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoy your tobacco bag. Take care.